Rick and Mods. Hello, I'm Greg Rutke of Rutke Mods, and welcome to Episode 6 of Season 2 of my Mac Pro series. In this episode, we'll be comparing the 4,1 Mac Pro with the 5,1 Mac Pro and explaining you the differences between the two and why you should consider getting the 4,1 over the 5,1 unless, of course, you can get the 5,1 for the same price or cheaper. Now, there's many other things we'll be covering over this video, including why you should uh, consider upgrading to a 5,1 EFI if you do have a 4,1, and also explaining to you what the difference is between the 4,1 and 5,1's EFIs. Anyway, so let's begin. Okay, so we'll start off by explaining to you the differences between them hardware-wise. Now, they're basically the same system. There's not a huge difference between the two. They use the same chipset and can do the same things, including running the same CPUs after you flash the 4,1. But there are some big differences. The first big difference is the CPU tray and how it is laid out and made in the 4,1. Now, Apple has always had this deal with Intel since they made their agreement together for Intel to make them special CPUs. When I say special, they sometimes have extra features that the consumer versions don't have. And sometimes they're just made differently. In this case, this was made differently. This CPU on the 4,1 was without an IHS on the top like this. This is a Core 2 Duo, by the way. This isn't a Xeon. But anyway, getting back to the point. What they had is a bare dyed CPU, which of course is what this looks like. This is also a Core 2 Duo, but still. That gives you a, a, a visual representation here. Anyway, so because of all this, the CPU tray, the CPUs sit in the tray, and then they have this heat sink sitting on top of them. This heat sink is specially made to remove the heat, of course, but it's Apple decided that it would probably cool better, and I don't think it really made a difference because they took that away in the 5,1 because I'm sure they realized it was just too expensive to have special CPUs made for it. So these heat sinks in this tray are specially designed to only fit this tray. And this tray is specially designed to only fit in the 4,1. So you have to stick with this tray. But the hardware on it is basically the same as the 5,1. The differences between it, like I said, with the CPUs and stuff, is the 5,1 has a different slot tray port in it to clip the tray into. They're similar and they're sort of backwards compatible in a way but they won't work right. I'd never com consider or recommend you switching them because you'll have a lot of problems. Sometimes they won't post. Sometimes the SMC just goes crazy and the fans blare at 100%. Sometimes, well, usually they never run. So I'm not going to even say that, that sometimes they run because they usually don't. But getting back to the point, because these ports on the board are different, you can't switch trays. Also, the SMC on the main board is actually expecting that certain board to be con connected, and that's why it causes those problems. So anyway, getting back to the CPU tray setup. The CPU trays, because the dies are bare on the 4,1, you have to remove that IHS, the integrated heat spreader, like this one right here. you got to get rid of that and end up with a CPU looking like that with the bare die. If you don't do that, you can crush your socket. What happens is if you're putting a regular Xeon into that machine socket and try to crank down the heat sink, you'll have problems where it's just where crush everything because the heat sink is designed to hit flushly and nice and have nice pressure on the non-IHS CPUs die. Now since the IHS makes it thicker, it's going to shove that CPU into the socket and crush the whole socket. 
and these CPU trays are extremely expensive still today. So if you break the CPU tray, you're going to be out of a lot of money. It's, it's very serious. So this is the only drawback about getting a 4 comma 1. 4 comma 1s are very easy to flash and turn into a 5 comma 1. But, of course, that CPU tray and the CPUs are the problem. If you decide to go from the Nilleheim, I think I'm saying that right, CPUs that were in the 4 comma 1s and the 5 comma 1 4 cores, I think, and decide to go to the West Mirror, which was the 5 comma 1 CPUs, you have to do two things. One, before you do anything, you have to flash from a 4 comma 1 to a 5 comma 1 EFI. If you don't do that, the CPU won't be recognized in the system and the system won't post. So you have to do that first and then you can change the CPUs. Now there's two ways to do the CPU. The way I'd recommend where you remove the IHS and there's many tutorials online on how to do that. Or you can do it the way that some people do because they're lazy. I'm just saying it's, it's better to do it the IHS way. But if you decide to do it this way, it's risky and it may cause cooling issues and you still may fry the system. What some people do is they put shims in between the rod of the screw and the uh, base of the board basically. So when you crank it down it just has enough gap there so the IHS and the heat sink connect but there's no pressure in the socket. That's not a good thing, really, because you're never going to get the perfect pressure. Whereas if you remove the IHS and get all that um, interface off of it, the thermal interface, you'll have no problems because it's designed to just be as flush as always. So that's the main reason why the 4 comma 1 is different from the 5 comma 1. There's just a few very different in everything. In fact, if you look at the picture of the 4 comma 1 right here, okay, this is the 4 comma 1. Now if you look at the 5 comma 1, there's no difference. In fact, these are Apple supplied pictures that I took, took me forever to find now, but back in the day, these were the ones they advertised with. And if you notice, they look the same. They basically are the same computer. The 5 comma 1 is only tellable by the um, the concept 5000 series GPU that's in that picture right here. If you can see right there, you can see the card. But anyway, getting back to the point, that's the only main reason. The CPU tray is different, the socket on the main board is different, and the CPUs are different. Now the other difference between the 4 comma 1 and the 5 comma 1. The 4 comma 1, like I said earlier, only uh, support the Nielheim CPUs and they only support 1066 DDR3 RAM where the 5 comma ones support the Westmere and Nielheim and support 1066 and 1333 DDR3. So when you upgrade the 4 comma one to a 5 comma ones EFI you'll be able to run Westmere's aka you can run two 6 cores to have a 12 core machine and you can run 1333 MHz DDR3. So that's the main difference between the two systems. Um, they can run up to 128 gigs of RAM if you're doing the uh, dual socket CPUs or 64 gigabytes worth of RAM if you're doing a single socket CPU system. Now let's talk about buying a 4 comma 1 over a 5 comma 1 and why you should do it. So why you should buy a 4 comma 1 over a 5 comma 1 is a 4 comma 1 is considered obsolete by Apple and many other people out there. And it's not really. Not in today's world. And like I said before, it's upgradable to a 5 comma 1. Apple has deemed it obsolete and it does not support Sierra or High Sierra without hacking. But flashing the EFI to a 5 comma 1 will allow you to install Sierra and High Sierra natively, which is a good thing. That means it's still a modern Mac in the terms of 
and eyes of everyone else because it will still run the most recent operating system without hacking. And the only hacking, of course, you have to do is to flash it one time. I'd always recommend you flashing your 4 comma 1 to a 5 comma 1 for two reasons. One, it allows you to do those native updates straight from the App Store. It will install with no problems. Two, it allows you to upgrade to a 5 comma 1 spec if you ever want to. You right now with your 4 comma 1 can upgrade your EFI Flash. I'll put links in the description where you can download the software for it to flash everything and a link to the tutorial on how to do it on I think it was NatCus. But anyway, um, you can do that yourself. When you flash it, you'll have a 5 comma 1. It will still have all the hardware of a 4 comma 1 unless of course you're upgrading but it will be a 5 comma 1. So in that case everything will be supported. Plus having a flash system allows you to resell it for a little bit more because it's now considered a 5 comma 1. So getting a 4 comma 1 is actually a much better investment. Plus the old Nilleheim CPUs aren't that much worse in performance over the Westmere but, of course, the Westmere are more efficient, run a little more powerfully, and have extra cores if you need them. But that's basically it. So that's the differences between the 4 comma 1 and the 5 comma 1 pros. And that's basically it. Everything that I covered with you should help you understand why you should consider getting the 4 comma 1 and what the difference is, is between the two. Anyway, so that's the end of the video and thank you for watching. In the next video we'll be talking about how to upgrade your 3 comma 1, 4 comma 1 to Mac OS Sierra. Anyway, thank you for watching. This has been a Rutkin Mods video.